Hey guys, welcome back. So I promised you three videos this week and voila, we have done it. So I've just realized I'm just wearing a denim shirt with my hair like this. What do you think? Do you remember the Ola Mills? I think that's an English reference, but I feel like I should have my collar flicked up. Do you remember them with the big perms? It was very, very, very big, very big in the, uh, in the 80s, but anyway, regardless. Um, yes, so uh, me and my poodle perm are going to start with <laughs> the lovely Prince Edward today. Prince Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh, who on Thursday attended a service of dedication ceremony to welcome a new ship into naval service. The RFA Stirling Castle was previously an oil rig support vessel, but now is the mothership of the Royal Navy's new mine countermeasure system. The ceremony was attended by various members of the Ministry of Defence and, of course, the crew of the Stirling Castle. Prince Edward holds the position of Commodore-in-Chief of the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. And I have to say, as I said in my previous video, he is looking rather dashing these days. And the uniform, who doesn't love a man in uniform? Each and every engagement that we are seeing Prince Edward do, he is looking more and more healthier. And he always has such a lovely smile on his face. You can tell he's genuinely a warm and lovely person. And I can actually say I've met someone when I went up to Scotland who has met Prince Edward and Princess Anne and said that they are in fact both really really lovely really really pleasant. I think it's always nice to find out that a celebrity or maybe someone that you admire you look up to someone that is has been your childhood hero is actually as nice in person because as we know not all famous people make nice people. Now, speaking of celebrities, there is a big case that is unfolding in America where lots of names have been mentioned, but more specifically, Prince Harry's name got dropped into the mix, which I'm pretty certain is going to be the one time he's not happy that his name has been mentioned amongst A-listers. This is, of course, him being named in the P. Diddy court case. Now, at this point, as I said, Harry hasn't done anything wrong. He's not being accused of any wrongdoing. He's just been named as a party goer to P. Diddy's parties, the nature of which is under a serious criminal investigation. But the problem is for Harry, the fact that they did name him specifically. When in the court paperwork, it said, famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, no names were mentioned. Then the next segment, international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. They could have just simply said foreign princes, or even if they wanted to be more vague, royalty. There is enough of them from all different families all around the world. Why specifically name Harry? Perhaps it was to get the world attention on the case because he is the second son of the King of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. But given the nature of the case and the number of celebrities that are actually being called out as taking part, or they might have known something, I doubt that they would need to use Prince Harry's name in America. These celebrities are obviously huge in their own right. But this is where it's got worse for Harry because a former bodyguard who is now a celebrity in his own right, a Gene Deal, a former guardian of hip hop royalty, well, he's actually come out and he has said in an interview that there are, in fact, tapes. And I've got a clip for you to listen to. I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statement are true, they got him. Now here, okay, he has turned around and said, Princes, that is a bit more vague than saying Prince Harry, but because Prince Harry has already been named, it's quite clearly going to be open for speculation that that prince or princes is in fact the very same one. As I've said, yes, of course, it is all speculation, but given the fact that Harry bragged about going to a celebrity party at Courtney Cox's house where he got off his face on mushrooms, it's not far out there to think that Harry would have been invited and attended other celebrity bashes. But what is not looking good for Harry and is raising more questions is his silence on this. 
the fact is there has been no solicitor statements, no lawyers that have spoken out, no Archwell spokesperson has said anything about this. They're just pretending, I guess, at this point that it doesn't exist. And as we know, Harry and Meghan are never silent or silenced about anything. They put out statements to correct the narrative over the most ridiculous and trivial things. Yet when major things like this happen or Africa parks, they suddenly decide that they're taking a vow of silence. You would have thought that the moment the story dropped, Harry's lawyers would have been activated like the Avengers and there would have been threats going out for any media outlets that were going to publish the story or repeat the information. Where's the public cries from Harry's spokesperson, the indignation that his name was clearly being used to promote the court case or to promote other people's agenda? Nope, not a word, absolute zip. Now, this could also explain why Harry is now being stage managed within an inch of his life at all of his appearances. In yesterday's video, I spoke about Harry's better up appearance at that new conference. Harry chose not to take part in the live stream and apparently some of the fans were upset. But if you think about it, Harry has stopped taking part in doing any live streams with members of the public. Everything we do see of Harry is orchestrated. It's clear he's more scripted now than ever before and the public access is kept to the bare minimum. Hence the security constantly surrounding him like he's the president most of the time. I think he's now signed to a talent agency. His appearances are all paid and heavily managed. There is no way anyone can scream, what about your family, Harry, at him? What about Africa Parks, the back of tribesmen? How many P. Diddy parties did you go to? This is why Harry is having sleepless nights and he's stressed about his appearance and the time he's appearing at St Paul's Cathedral being leaked. It's got nothing to do with security. He, and no doubt his team, are very concerned about members of the public perhaps shouting some things that Harry doesn't want to make it into the newspapers. It's all stage managed to avoid any embarrassing moments. It's all about crafting the perfect image, manipulating people, a rebrand. And with their popularity, at its lowest ever, they need to avoid any major public slip-ups. This was always why they had a war with the media. They want to control the narrative. They want to manage all images and videos so that they can be edited before it's ever released to the world. There is no genuine interactions with him or with her. There is no authenticity to him anymore either. He now comes across as fake as his wife. Harry left the royal family for freedom, but I'd say he's more caged now than ever before, being told what to think, what to say and when. That is possibly the reason why Harry might indeed end up having a genuine burnout. Which brings me to my next and final story. Harry and Meghan have released the news, the hotly anticipated news that the world has been waiting for, said no one ever, that two new Netflix productions will be coming our way and hitting our screens at some point. Harry has finally found a subject that Netflix is willing to take him up on, and that is the world of polo. Yes, despite the fact that Harry has had accusations of mistreatment of ponies previously made in the past, he is now going to be given unprecedented access to the world of professional polo. And filming has already clearly started taking place because on Friday, Harry and Meghan attended the Royal Salute Polo Cup Challenge, a charity match to raise money for Centre Bali in Miami. Meghan wore her typical uniform of being completely overdressed for the event that she was attending, wearing gigantic spiked heels to trot around on the grass with, and a dress that was rather too revealing, I would say, for someone that demands the world treats her as a duchess. One inch to the left, we would have had a nip slip, and we could quite clearly see that Meghan has still not heard of what a half slip is. The typical loved up display was put on for the Netflix camera crew that were following them around everywhere to capture every natural and candid moment. But there were certainly a couple of moments where they clearly weren't aware that the cameras were still on them. This is more of the natural dynamic between this couple. My gut feeling is still that these two are not 
together. I think that they come together for business ventures. I do not believe that these two are loved up as they like to display. It all comes back round to being staged managed. There is too much footage and too many photographs of when they don't realise the cameras are on them and they do not look like that they are a happy couple. I am not buying what they are selling. Megan naturally had to take centre stage. There's nothing fake about that or unusual, nor was her stare that was fixed on the cameraman at all times. Not even Nacho could tear her stare away from getting her money shots. At one point, Megan was so determined that she was going to remain in the centre of the stage when a couple of the women that were representatives from the Centre Bali charity came on to have their photographs taken with both the teams. Megan commanded three times where the women were allowed to stand and it certainly wasn't in the centre of the stage, nor was it anywhere near her trophy. It was clear that there were lots of other rich people there. You have, of course, got Nacho and his multi-millionaire wife, Delfina, and they brought along their young daughter, who Meghan was quite happily seen posing with, but there was, of course, no sign of Harry and Meghan's very own children, who I'm sure would love to come and watch Daddy play polo. But hey, Meghan had a role to play, and she certainly wouldn't want children hanging off her ankles. They could ruin her shots. Megan, as we know, as many people have said that she is a narcissist, she has to take center stage. This is why she will not allow Harry to have any projects by himself. I think Better Up's the only one he's got away with so far being able to attend without Megan trying to take over. But at this point, it's quite clearly obvious that this couple individually or together are absolutely ridiculous. The fact is that this was a charity fundraiser for Centre Bali. There are other celebrities there. This is obviously private polo grounds where not any old riffraff can just come walking in and out if they wanted to. So it's obvious that the grounds have the capability to keep everybody safe. But Harry and Meghan walk in being flanked by two armed security guards like they are the president and the first lady. It's absolutely absurd. These two just look like egocentric maniacs at this point. Look at us, we're so important we're so special and that's why they want the security. It's got nothing to do with their safety. It's got everything to do with making themselves look more important and more special than everybody else. And I've got to ask, I wonder who his target audience is? Let's not pretend that polo is not an elitist sport. It's a rich man's game. You need hundreds of thousands of pounds for horses, for jet setting around the world, to play in the various seasons across many countries. And I can only imagine the eye-watering membership that you need. I'm honestly truly puzzled that Netflix have signed off on this. I can't see that they think that Harry's gonna pull in the sort of figures to give them any sort of a financial hit. And you'd think with Harry, Just Call Me H, would want to do a documentary about philanthropy, humanitarianism. What about going to Africa? He could do a documentary about Centre Bali. Why not show the world where Centre Bali actually spends all of this money that's apparently raised by polo matches? He has gone out there and done animal conservation. Why not do something actually interesting that people might like to watch? But no, here we are. Instead, he's working on a show about what is a rich man's sport that outside of those that either play it or are actually interested in equestrian sports, I can't see that many people will be very interested on a weeknight or a weekend, bottle of wine, flicking through Netflix, trying to find something to watch and you go, oh, Prince Harry's done an expose on what it's like to be rich and to play polo. Yeah, let's watch that one, shall we? I just can't see it happening. He is so far detached from reality, it is completely laughable. But that's not the best bit. No, the best of it is finally, we're gonna get the second half to, I'm presuming, Aro, the American Riviera Orchard launch that Megan did on Instagram. And she's gonna be releasing her very own cooking and gardening program. The new project says that Megan will be celebrating the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship. Yes, you heard me right. The one woman wrecking ball, the woman that uses people, dumps people, so much so that the word markled has made it into the dictionary, is going to be giving a show on entertaining and the wonderful joys of friendships. 
honestly, you cannot make it up with these two. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? What sort of ideas Harry and Meghan must have thrown at Netflix that have already been vetoed for this to be the final two ideas that they can come up with? The contract expires in 2025. They've come up with nothing else. Live to Lead didn't even register. Most people still don't even know what that was about. And that was bought for them, created for them, and they just had to film a few bits. Neither of them are likeable. Megan has this unbelievable inability to be able to talk to other people or about anything that's not herself. We saw it recently when she was talking on the feminist panel. She made it a whole victim story about her treatment. She was meant to be there to talk to people and inspiring other people. We saw it at the One Young World Summit. She was meant to, in that seven minutes she was on stage, she was meant to be given an inspiring speech to young leaders. Megan spoke about herself 50 times in that short space. We saw it on archetypes where Megan got celebrities on, barely letting them finish a sentence before she started again talking about herself. There are already so many gardening and cooking shows out there that I fail to see how Megan will be able to pull in the figures to make a hit for Netflix. I think that Netflix have just given up on this point. They're throwing them a few crumbs until the contract expires. They are obviously not going to get their money back for what they have paid, but they're obviously desperately trying to save face and trying to get them to produce something, anything. So guys, that's it for me on this video. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week. Take care for now. Bye.